Hello everyone, this is Grant, Developer Evangelist on the OpenShift team at Red Hat. In this video I'm going to walk you through how to install and configure the Red Hat client tools for the Microsoft Windows operating system. If you don't already have an OpenShift account, head on over to openshift.redhat.com and click the Try It Now button. It is free to sign up for an account at OpenShift and you are able to create three applications running in the cloud, each with 512 megs of RAM and 1 gig of disk space. If you want a promo code to use during the sign up process, you can use Windows Install as your promo code. Once you have an account, you'll want to begin using the OpenShift service. We have two dependencies that must be installed first on the Windows operating system. The first one is Ruby for Windows and then Git for revision control systems. This is a brand new installation of Windows 7 64-bit and I'll walk you through how to get up and running. First thing I do is I go to rubyinstaller.org and I'll click the big red download button on the middle of the page. This will list the versions of software that you're able to download. I'm going to go ahead and select the latest version then I'm going to select run. Once the download is complete select to run the application and then the installer will begin to run. Review and accept the license if you agree to all of the terms. Select where you would like to install Ruby and then make sure to select to add Ruby executables to your path. Once the installation is finished the next thing we'll need to do is to download and install the Git revision control system. So I'm going to mysysgit.github.com I'm going to select to download Git for Windows so I'll click on the downloads which is available on Google Code. After you click on downloads you'll be presented with a list of versions of Git for Windows that you can install. I'm going to select the latest version then I'll select to run the application once it's complete As you can see I have user access or user account control enabled because this is a fresh Windows installation and it's asking for permission to make changes to this computer. I'm going to select yes then I'm going to go through the installer. I'm going to read the license which is the GNU General Public License or the GPL. It's going to ask me where I would like to install it. I'm going to select the defaults here And then on this um, dialog box, I want to make sure that I select Run Git from the Windows command prompt. And then make sure that Check Out Windows Style, Commit Unix Style is enabled. Select Next. And this will actually install the Git revision control system on our desktop. Now that that's complete, I'm going to close the web browser. And I'm going to open up the command line client tool. At this point I can do gem install rhc and it's going to download and install any dependencies that's required as well as Red Hat client tools on my local system. At this point I should be able to use the rhc client tools. I'm assuming at this point also that you already have an OpenShift account and namespace created. So I can do rhc domain show which should list all of the applications that I currently have enabled and deployed on my domain. What you'll notice here is that since this is a fresh installation the command will recognize that I have not configured my machine yet and it will set up and configure the settings to interact with OpenShift for me including generating the SSH key. So I'll issue this command and the first thing it's going to do is tell me that I need to specify the username which I'm going to be using to work with OpenShift. So I'll type in my username then it's going to ask me to authenticate with my password. Now it's telling me that it cannot find an SSH key and it wants to create one for me. So it did so and then it's asking me if I want to upload it to the server. I do and then I want to give this a name so I'm going to call this blog post and it's going to upload my new key for me. Now you can see that the command worked as expected. At this point I can create applications or do any other necessary things that I would want to do with OpenShift. 
And that's all there is to it. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions, email us at openshift at redhat.com, post a message on our forums, or contact us on IRC. We're in pound to OpenShift on Freenode. Thanks.